Merci. Merci. Bonsoir à tous. Bonsoir aux gens qui nous suivent sur la page Facebook donc de Arte Cinéma. En fait, euh, nous sommes en direct. Euh, je vous présente, vous avez déjà reconnu Wes Anderson. Je n'ai pas fait trop durer la standing ovation parce que je ne suis pas sûr que Wes aime beaucoup ça. Sur votre rapport au cinéma quand vous étiez enfant ou adolescent. Or là, on vient de voir Rochemort, qui est votre second long métrage, qui est un long métrage sur l'adolescence, dont le héros est un adolescent. Est-ce que je peux vous demander tout simplement comment ça a débuté Quel était votre rapport au début des années 70, au Texas, avec le cinéma Comment les films sont arrivés à vous Comment le cinéma est arrivé à vous Well, I think it was uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe the three uh, filmmakers that I, I remember particularly making uh, an impression on me. One was Hitchcock because there was a, a series of uh, Betamax uh, videotapes that were released that were were the um, American Hitchcock, the later Hitchcock films, and they. But you know, these were films that were released with his name, the director's name, above the title, and that was something I wasn't really aware of. I knew. Movie stars' names go above the title. And Nicola, if you ever, you know me very well. If you think you know what I'm going to say anyway, just tell me to stop and you just say it, um, because it will save us time. Okay, we we'll skip that. All right. Okay. I will read your mind uh, while, yes. you, while the questions came, are yes. asked or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, the other two were, were uh, Steven Spielberg. He was a, this. He was such such a famous director, and I loved these films, and I loved uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and um, he, he made a huge impression on me. Uh, but the other one that was in our local video store was Les Quatre Cent Coups. I don't think I'd ever seen a movie that was in French, and I was maybe I was 15 or something like that. And I think probably Truffaut, but that film is a bit like you know they say about the Velvet Underground that that. Um, Well, you know, it, what doesn't apply to Truffaut is they say not very many people bought the records in the first place, but everyone who bought the record started a band. I mean, a lot of people saw the catch of It was a hit movie, but but but, it, but they all started the band. Yes. <laughs> Yes, there were, yes, and you know, we used to sometimes, to save tape, you could fit a couple of movies, sometimes you might not get the whole movie, so some, there are some movies where I knew almost the whole movie very well, um, because I've Alors, tried to get two or three films. Aussi des films. But one of the films that I watched uh, very, very often on, on those videotapes was, is one that we're going to screen on uh, Sunday uh, with Barbie Schroeder, uh, Barfly. How old were you? I guess, well, but when Barfly came out, probably I was 16, something. You, you've shortened the question quite a lot, yeah. but, but, but yes. Um, <laughs> well, the, no, I, 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 at the era of Rushmore, we decided to adapt uh, films yes. into plays. When no. did you decide that no, you I would become that. a director? Yeah. Um, the, um, I th you know, I wanted to be a director um, when, I was, when I was very young. I, I sort of drifted away from it for, for a while. I, I wanted, then I, I wanted to be a writer. When I was a teenager, I was more interested in being a writer, but... but Um, but um, but I guess on some level I always, you know, I, I, I know, somehow I knew that this was the thing I really was going to end up most. Mais en fait, je savais que. Um, well, I did not go to film school. Um, um, at the University of Texas, they the thing they did have was they they had a good they had a they have a good film school. I I just wasn't a part of it. Um, but. Um, I, but they also have a they have a very very good library and system of libraries and they have a lot of movies in the in the uh, in their it, it really the, the the collection of books that they had at that time in their library about movies what they were mostly about they were about the the moment when international cinema sort of arrived in America in this big way in the 60s with uh, you and also Asian and you know um, and you but you can say who the you know it's Truffaut and Godard and Bergman and uh, Rossellini and Fellini and Kurosawa, Fellini, Kurosawa. And these guys were suddenly all stars. Well, this was this was what their this was what they this was when they bought their movie books, really. Um, so I kind of learned about those directors and watched their films and went back and forth between the books and the movies. And you did you go to film school? No. 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 Oui, je comprends. Um, <laughs> the um, the um, uh, um, the um, 
I, I, you know, what I think is the whole movie is probably at least as uh, inspired by European movies, maybe more than American movies. I mean, I, I definitely... But it's also interesting because Owen uh, Wilson, he is not so... Uh, fascinated with European films. I mean, he, he, has, he, he, has, he has European films that he loves, but this is not one of his great passions. Yeah. And, you know, Rushmore is both of us. So, 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 so part of it has a, a, a European movie influence. But I think, uh, but the other thing I think is maybe with, with um, you know, I, I, I would say for Owen, partly for me, we're probably... Um, I, I, I want to say he's might have he might have been thinking his greatest influence for, for that movie might be more literary ones, but I don't know which influences those would be really. Um, so anyway, well that's that's it for that question I guess I can't think of anything else to say about it. I, it wasn't like we were deliberately saying let's do a genre movie. Uh, no, that we were instead. I mean the movie that the the the, the really the movie that we're going to show later tonight. The Souffle au Coeur, that, that movie was, that is one of the biggest influences on it. And that one you wouldn't put in any genre at all. I mean, you would say it's just a, um, it's all, it's... Melodrama, perhaps? It's like an invented memoir or you know, something like that. <laughs> um, yes, and, and that's, you know, this, that was just a, that's a, that's a song I loved. But then I also thought, well, it, well, if you, if he was trying to seduce somebody, that's, well, I think that would do it. But I also think, you know, that, um... I'm sure that the that that the scene was basically written to that music. I I feel like uh, I was I it was the the music kind of came first. That's a, that, that's not a question. No, it's a, uh, um, why? The, um, yes, why? Um, the uh, well, well, you know. Uh, um, there's the 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 whole uh, movement of uh, directors who had he was a sort of master and guide to a to a company of directors, and um, when I started making films, I had one friend who was uh, uh, Owen who was make, who was working with me. Without if we didn't meet, if we didn't um, uh, click in that way, I, I mean. I, we both would have tried to do one thing or another, but I'm, I think it, it would have been a harder struggle. Um, and, we, and we relied on more than one mentor ourselves. There's a, uh, um, a producer named Kit Carson. Do you know who that is? No. L.M. Kit Carson. Did you ever see uh, uh, David Holtzman's diary? Yes. You've seen it. He's yeah. in it. He, he, okay. he co-wrote it and he's in it. Um, and... Um, and then also James L. Bro well, well, Kit was our early mentor in tech, and James L. Brooks and Polly Platt the chance to make a whole film, and Jim really taught us, you know, uh, everything about how you how you take a script that you may have been working on for a long time. In our case, we'd been rehearsing it for probably four years or something, um, but the difference between taking this uh, script and making a, a whole movie work, well, we needed it. We needed a teacher for that. So I'm connecting Langlois uh, to that, uh, you know, um, whatever, to that kind of experience, I guess. Do you wrote for Kaye for yes, a little while, I didn't did. you? Yes. Um, do you feel part of a, of, a, of a continuity with those? Well, I, you know, uh, I would see. you say that? I would see. you? Yes. Would um, you agree with that? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think I would hide them on purpose. I mean, I think the reason to hide your inspirations or your or um or the, the the best the reason to hide them is because you're trying to steal them and if you can sneak it in then you know uh then you've just you've just uh you you've you've gained something without having to uh Et si on peut les faire passer something. un peu en douce on... yes. Well, uh, um, I think at, at this point, usually when I'm when I'm starting, uh, uh, when I'm just in the point of kind of having a collection of ideas for a movie, which often is sort of a list. It, uh, there, there might be there, there the, on the list is maybe an idea for a character, which may be a bit of an idea for a story, but just as often it's also a list of uh, some painting yeah. and several movies and um, and a, maybe a, a place that I've visited or something like that. It, I, I, I agree with that, and I also think that, that it makes me think about the fact that when you make a movie, 
you it's not like you're just organizing the chaos you're creating a new chaos which is the experience of trying to do a movie and the one thing that i've kind of enjoyed uh sort of learning to do or or figuring out little aspects of anyway is making some systems for just kind of running a movie we have so many people that you know there, there's a number of people here tonight in fact who have worked with me for years yes well i think that you know usually i i, I think the thing i don't really think about is uh at the beginning of a movie is is whether or not people will care about this you know um um i i I, it's usually I I want to do this movie and I'm just going to try to do it. Uh, but then after that point, and I, I, usually I end up kind of creating something that is uh, that has some that has new, numerous problems that are built into built into it. So then so much of of making the film is about how to take whatever it is, whatever it sort of has to be, and to make it clear. And to make it something that you can latch onto and follow, yes, and that's that's something that is just goes from from re rewriting the script over and over and over, and all the way to um, you know the day that you um, that you make the final uh, print release print. Yes, the last things I, I I feel like the last things that are happening are always about trying to reduce the number of people that are who are going to be confused yes. well that i don't know i mean i mean I, I, <laughs> I i know why i mean i know why i i feel like i wanted to make a european film because i had been i had spent a lot of time in europe and the movie related to the things i was reading and it related to it even and it, and it also relates to it relates to european literature european movies but it also relates to American movies, a kind of whole uh, genre of American movies that oh. was set in Middle Europe. But I don't know why one point people. I mean, you know, I, I, I my experience is you 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 think you you have no idea what's going to happen to the movie mm -hmm. until sometime well after it's already been released. In particular, uh, the 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 Louis Malthams and and the River. The, but I think that probably the bigger inspiration is um, is Sachet Ray's films, which is a huge body of work of, you know, beautiful, amazing films. But I think we could say that Ray actually was inspired by Renoir. I'm not meaning that Re that his movies are. In, I mean, everybody's influenced by everybody, and that's a filmmaker he loved. I mean, literally, he met Renoir, who was filming The River, and this was part of what led. Uh, Pada Panchali comes after that experience. That's right, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, Lubitsch. Well, Lubitsch, uh, definitely. And o Ophuls, I th I think Ophuls too. Yes, um, I think, um, you know, I think, um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, in, in, in different ways. Lubitsch, I think, on some level, we were thinking of sort of every day. Um, but we even had a, um, we had a whole stack of movies where we... We all lived together in a in a little hotel when we were making. It was in Germany. On the line. Yeah, it was on the Polish border. It was a town called Gerlitz, and we had a whole stack of movies. Ben, Ad, my assistant Ben Adler, he he he's worked with me on many movies. Do you remember some of them? We had, um, yes, and there were and there were there were lots. Yes, um, right. we had we had. In fact, my our, uh, uh, we named our daughter after after a character in one of them. Um, the you? Mortal Storm. Do you know the Mortal Storm? Uh, the Mortal Storm. The Frank Balzage. James Stewart. Yeah. Um, question and comment. I think, um, I mean, that's when I say about stealing. Yes, um, it, uh, often, I mean, often we're we're stealing from movies without even really knowing it because they're things that are sort of built into how a movie is done. You know, I mean, some, somewhere along the way, I, maybe it's Griffith or something, there was the idea, maybe we should have a shot that is just like this. And that might be good. When we do a close-up now, we don't really uh, consider it an homage to Griffith. Yeah. So, I, um, but, um, but yeah. Some, so sometimes I do find where I'm I'm watching movies just specifically because I I need something, something that's missing. Yes. I mean, I do feel there are some filmmakers who, um, like, I remember reading Gus Van Sant saying uh, that he's it's, he has a few films. Like he had he had mentioned the Orson Welles uh, Chimes at Midnight and Andy Warhol's uh, films as as real inspirations for him. But yes, but he didn't. But he was sort of saying I, he's not someone who watches movies all the time, who draws from draws from all the movies. Which is, the interesting thing to me is that you would never. 
uh, I, his movies are as sophisticated and informed as anybody's. Yes, you can't really predict what somebody's process is or what, what they draw. Um, the um, yes, I, I, I don't the, the I, I don't know if I have a comment specifically about that, except that I agree with it. But I do remember the first time I saw that film. It was um, at I think it was the New Beverly Cinema in Los Angeles, um, and one of the projectors broke. And, you know, to watch a movie, to watch a movie without, uh, you know, the, the old way, you need two projectors. You go from reel, from reel to reel. Um, so they came, the, the, uh, the manager of the theater came out and asked if, we, it, 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 they said we have a problem, but if anyone wants to, we'll run the movie on one projector, which means that between, e, between the reels, you're going to have like about f five minutes. It's like, it's a movie that's already... Four, four hours long? And then, you, yes. and then you add eight intermissions and you have to really, really want to see it. But I do remember <laughs> that, there, that there were maybe three people who stayed the whole time <laughs> and I was one of them. And it was a very powerful experience. It was kind of a good way to see it. I just wish I had brought some snacks and things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I like to... I, I, I watch a lot of movies at home. Je regarde beaucoup chez moi. It makes a huge difference if you're watching a Blu-ray. Which, in a way, is an argument for seeing movies this way. I mean, sometimes I would rather, even if I would rather see the other movie, I would, I'll watch the Blu-ray, just to, it, because it's a more powerful experience, just having the clarity, having it be like a real movie. How do you direct actors? Well, you know, every actor has their own way they want to be directed, don't you think? And uh, uh, some actors, I mean, I can, I, I, I can name some names. Um, like, uh, like an actor like Jeff Goldblum, he wants you to tell him everything that you can. And, he's, and he asks you, and you want this a little, you want him, he's a little scared, right? He's, he's more, he's scared here. He tries to get words out of you. And other actors, like for instance, uh, Gene Hackman, for instance, would be happy if you didn't speak to him. And, 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 and you might be, and, and with him, you, you would be, you might be very uh, startled by how good he is when you don't interfere. And, I, and, and some actors I know uh, love to do many, many takes. Like Ra Rafe Fiennes, when we did this last one, Grand Budapest Hotel, Rafe is very happy and he would like to do it again. If we could, just one more time. And Rafe can get better and better. And he, 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 even if he was already good at the beginning, he, the takes get better and better. He finds something else. And the thing I, I felt with Gene Hackman many, many years ago was um, he wants to get it immediately. He, he does everything he can to make the first take really count. I mean, I, say, I, I, mean, I don't even know him that I mean, It's a long, long time ago, but that was my kind of impression anyway. You know, uh, um, I always, I guess what I, I, I think what I really liked were these uh, uh, TV specials in America, Christmas specials in America that they made uh, stop motion. The, I always liked the creatures like in the Harryhausen type uh, films. Um, but really, I think that these American Christmas specials were probably the thing that made me first want to do it. The first one I did was Fantastic Mr. Fox. And now I'm working on an, another film that's uh, in the same, that's also Image par Image. Uh, mon premier film, Image par Image, c'est Fantastic. I feel it's less influenced by stop-motion movies than it is by Akira Kurosawa. Are you happy with the films you've made? Um, I don't, who, who said that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, with his hand up there. Ah, yeah, uh, yes. Um, the, um, well, that's, a, that's a trick question. Yeah, yeah, it's a hard one to answer. Difficile de répondre. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Vous avez compris, je pense. No, I mean, I, 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 I appreciate the question. Um, but uh, but you know what I am what I can say I am happy with I, I I'm happy with um with so many collaborations that I've had I'm happy with uh, what with what other people have done for these movies and I've loved the process sometimes of writing these movies with my collaborators. To, to find the films you made uh, uh, or what you dreamed they uh, were uh, what you dreamed of, yeah. knowing that for instance when Truffaut started making films every time. He started doing a movie. He was forgetting about the dream, Once or you start the shooting. desire to make the film. He just had to finish it and make sure the film was finished and made. And you try to find the dream again in the editing room. From the first film that I uh, that I uh, worked on, um, I am um, 
always very the first dailies the first rushes we, uh, now we don't even look at now I, we don't even, we never even look at the rush but you know the way it used to be you filmed for the day and then you went and watched what you did the day before. and from the first film that i made when i saw the first uh, the first of the dailies i thought this is not anything like what i expected it to be <laughs> and not necessarily in a bad way i just thought so that is what it's like when you add all these ingredients together and that and that that doesn't change the only thing that ça change pas ça so you don't watch the rushes anymore no i i watch that. now i now you know i mean what i don't know what uh, your experience i mean now well, you get I, you I get a to watch them. I, 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 i i watch them if i'm sent a um you know i i mean i'm sent quick times and things yeah. of the of the rushes but it used to be that we all went to a small version of a room like this you had to do it you needed to see if if there was a scratch yeah. on the negative yeah. if there was oh, something yeah. wrong yeah but also it used to be too that you said well let's print that one that part of the pr that's long gone yeah, now we so. now everything gets you see everything and yeah. you watch it all you used to, often you used to watch one you would watch one take you know uh, i mean did you make films where you would print just one take of each uh, of a of a of a shot well i haven't i haven't shot a, a movie i haven't i've shot some little uh, like i've made a commercial with a, an alexa Avec or something alexa. like that um but um i don't really know the experience of shooting on where you can just keep rolling but i agree with michel's uh, assessment and so much that what i actually like to, to like to do is i don't like to cut uh, when we're shooting on film i because as soon as you cut uh, 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 everyone starts moving around and talking and and fixing the thing that they're meant to to yeah. fix so i i've i but over the years because i like to keep rolling we've wasted so much film um and so now now we have a new system where instead of where instead of saying cut i say still rolling but they cut um and so everyone pretends that we're still rolling oh. sometimes they violate it a bit but they try to give me the illusion that the tension is still there que la tension est toujours là qu'elle yes. est pas perdue et la tension est importante sur un plateau yes i mean it's it's crucial just to I think sometimes actors, they, they're, 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 they've, this, uh, whatever's happening, they've ended up with a kind of spell that they're, that they've wanted to be cast under. Music is very important in your film. How would you work with Mark Mothersbaugh in your early films, and how do you work now with Alexandre Desplat? Yes, well, it's the, sa it's the same, uh, same process, really. And they're both uh, composers who I, you know, who I, who I, got to know through their work but then became good friends with so we've had so, very good collaboration um alexandre has the interesting thing which is he he i particularly particularly love the the music for birth for for the film birth but then i found out that he lived only two blocks away from me um and so at that point i knew we must work together um, and ville. for it was like a norman in, in montparnasse ah à montparnasse. À paris, <laughs> à paris. Um, so um, anyway, and uh, and so I've had a great time working with Alexandre on these movies, and we have a quite informal, um, very fun sort of way of working. And he and he likes to kind of play. You know, he's he's he has very deep kind of musical uh, knowledge. Il a une grande culture musicale. And wide ranging, um, but he's also happy if you said, um, you know, I think that it might be interesting if we had a part that's just for people uh, stomping their feet he said i can write a yes i can write a part for that yeah. so he might compose a foot stomping line well i think some sometimes uh, sometimes i've done movies where there was music that i knew from from working on the script and it was it's really it could have been written into the script and the scenes probably don't exist if you don't have that music But then, um, but then certainly there's there, uh, the, you know, the, this last movie, Grand Budapest Hotel. I, I had almost no music, and, and uh, you know, Alexandre wrote basically everything that's that's in it. There's, there's some some there's some Vivaldi, and um, maybe there's a, there's some uh, what, some yodeling, some ex some existing yodeling um, that we used, which actually we took from a, a Werner Herzog film. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah he has more chance with you than with Terence Malick because he keeps writing scores for Malick and he doesn't use them. He uses other music instead, like the Debussy. Yes, but he probably has a lot of fun before Terence Malick throws out the music. Yeah, well, 
I don't I don't know. I mean, I think it's a bit like um uh just it's it's not something that I feel is 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 important uh dramatically or uh, it, that's it's just for me. I mean, I think the way I might uh, uh, sort of uh arrange things in a frame or something like that, that's that's um that's just I, I mean, I would I could compare it to like handwriting or something. You know, it's uh, you, you might try to write very well, but really you have something that your brain is inclined to do. Would you consider Bill Murray as your porte-parole, uh, Captain Zizou, which is a sequel in a way from Rushmore? <laughs> Just so yeah. would I, would I consider? Um, Bill Murray, my kind of principal. Bill Murray is one of my favorites, but um, but I do think there are. I have I have a little gang of people, and Bill is one of the central people in that. But o Owen is the, the the first. You know, Owen and Luke Wilson. These are the ones who I really. Mais Owen and Luke with. Wilson ont été les premiers. C'est avec eux que j'ai commencé. And their brother Andrew commencé. too. Et, um, et leur frère Andrew aussi. So and Owen and I have done many many movies uh, together. Um, so uh, Owen, Jason Schwartzman. Um, Bill Murray. These are, uh, and then, but, but it's, but it's a, it's, it's a, it's a group that's, that's grown. Yeah. Uh, yeah Merci infiniment. Merci. Merci infiniment, Nicolas. Thank you.